Here is a poem and flowers and trees. Here is a music and mountains and sea. Beautiful sights of rivers and sky. All other beauties in Turkmenistan. Really sink in the footage that you've just seen and try to understand what you just looked at. <laughs> Is this some kid's school project who just rapping with his grandpa with that is incredibly cringy? Or is it maybe a part of a show or a sketch of some sort? This has to be a joke, right? Well, no, it's not. What you guys just looked at are videos, official governmental videos of a post-Soviet leader of a post-Soviet country called Turkmenistan named Gurbangui Birdemuhamedov. He's practically the most bizarre post-Soviet leader that exists today and also he runs a country that basically rivals North Korea with how terrible human rights and freedom of speech in the country is. He's a man of many talents, he's a creator of his own personality cult in Turkmenistan and also one of the most terrible dictators to exist today. Yes, that is correct guys. This your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian, and in today's video, guys, we're gonna be looking at perhaps the post Soviet version of North Korea, that is Turkmenistan, and also at its very bizarre, weird leader that goes by the name of Gurbangui Berdimuhamedov. It's kind of like a tongue twister. Gurbangui Berdimuhamedov. Now, before we really get into it, I hope you guys are noticing the camera quality in this video, okay? Because I bought a new camera. It's a Sony. I splashed out like over two grand on the entire setup. My life is pain. <laughs> so I hope you guys appreciate the quality overall. And in order for me to make up the money for this camera, um, I want to advertise my YouTubes once again. Once again, YouTubes are these vinyl souvenir figurines that you can buy and they basically represent your favorite creators. It's basically a type of merch, you can buy it as a little souvenir, as a memory for yourself and also to support your favorite creator, meaning me, you know, I'm your favorite creator. But yeah, I designed the figure myself, it's pretty cool. The website has free worldwide shipping, so if you guys want to get yourself one of these, then go over to the link down in the description, get yourself one of these and support my channel and uh, please help me make back the money. I spent on this camera. <laughs> Alright guys, now that we've done that, let's get into the video. So let's start out with a little bit of history to understand why this happens and how this happens. Until 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed, Turkmenistan used to be part of the Soviet Union. It used to be one of the republics of the Soviet Union and in 1991 it gained independence, just like basically every other republic. And Turkmenistan began its existence as a new democratic nation. The first leader of Turkmenistan was Sarparmurat Niyazov, also known as Turkmen Bashi, which means like the leader of all, of all Turkmen people. Turkmenistan is a mostly Muslim nation that is populated by Turkmens, which is a Central Asian nation. The first president, Niyazov, or Turkmen Bashi, was basically Turkmenistan's version of Kim Il-sung. The North Korea parallel might seem exaggerated to you guys right now, but as we're gonna go through all of this, you're gonna understand why. The first president of Turkmenistan, Turkmen Bashi, who by the way won the first election with a percentage of 99.5% votes in a very fair election, this guy has created a cult of personality that has never ever been seen before in any Soviet nation. Even Stalin did not have this ridiculous of a cult of personality. I'm talking over 14,000 statues of the leader around the country, including gold statues, portraits of the leader hung around the city, you know, City 17 style, basically. Absolute lack of political opposition and freedom of speech. Turkmenistan is basically North Korea. You cannot say anything about the president. There is no opposition. Say anything that remotely opposes the current government you go to jail immediately. And also the country is not the most open in the world. Technically more open than North Korea because most people can actually travel to other countries if they could afford it because, I mean, unemployment rates in Turkmenistan, according to statistics, is about from 60 to 80%. So, most of the population doesn't have a job, so I don't think they can really afford traveling anywhere. But technically, the borders are not closed, however, if you come to Turkmenistan and uh, if you commit a cringe, uh, you might be actually locked in and you could stay there and you could be sent to a Turkmenistani gulag. So it's very similar to North Korea, you know, like that story of that student that got uh, locked up in a North Korean gulag essentially for stealing a poster. The exact same thing can happen in Turkmenistan as well, so there's no such thing as freedom of speech, freedom of movement or human rights in Turkmenistan. All of the media is controlled by the states and the everything just basically serves the interests of the supreme leader. Because like if you actually look at videos of how governmental procedures take place, uh, of his speeches, of his meetings with other governmental officials, it's basically North Korea. Like everybody has to stand up and clap and cheer. It's exactly the same. Turkmenistan is literally the light version, the diet version of North Korea. Turkmen Bashi also wrote a book called Ruhnama, which is kind of like 
the Turkmenistani Bible, I guess. Not in the religious sense, but it's like a, it's a political and ideological work that uh, outlines the vision for the future of the Turkmenistani people and shit like that. Basically, it's like Juche. This is the exact same. And the book of Ruhnama is so epic that even the book has statues. And in 2006, the first leader of Turkmenistan, Turkmen Bashi, passed away and he was replaced by a new person who used to be the Ministry of Health of Turkmenistan, Gurbanguli Berdimuhamedov, who we're gonna be talking about today most of the video. Believe it or not, this guy is actually believed to be a bastard child of uh, Turkmen Bashi himself. So this may be actually even a hereditary position, uh, the president of Turkmenistan. Now when it comes to Berdimuhamedov, whose uh, like uh, name in uh, Turkmenistan is Arkada, which basically means like the savior or the overlord kind of. He's really Turkmenistan's version of Kim Jong-un. He's a bit younger, he's a bit more hip, he's interested in cool things like driving cars and uh, doing donuts and drifting and stuff like that. My man's even got a Bugatti Veyron, I mean he's bullet. He's exactly the same as his predecessor, he's the same authoritarian dictator that jails everybody who dares to oppose him and he doesn't care at all about the people of his own country because the poverty and the unemployment in the country is rampant and it's insane. All he cares about is being dripped out and uh, making sure that everybody bows down in front of him and basically acts like he's God. Because in Turkmenistan, on a governmental level, the leader of the country is considered to be like the Allah's disciple or whatever. I guess now you guys understand why I'm comparing this to North Korea, don't you? Now here's the thing, you guys know that Kim Jong-un has all these fun videos of him like shooting guns and uh, you know, he's a big fan of like Dennis Rodman and everything, they're homies, you know, he loves basketball I guess. Now there's always videos of Kim Jong-un going around and just being himself and everybody like bows down in front of him says thanks for being the most epic leader and the savior of the Korean people. It's exactly the same with uh, Arkadak, uh, Gurbanguli Berdimuhamedov, except that he's even funnier and more ridiculous than Kim Jong-un. As soon as Gurbanguli basically came into power, he started erecting huge statues for himself because he's the last disciple now, he has to do it. So a massive golden statue of uh, Gurbanguli on his horse was erected in the center of Ashgabat, the uh, capital of Turkmenistan, and also all of the portraits of the previous leader, Turkmen Bashi, are now replaced with the portraits of Arkadak, uh, the current leader. And essentially every single Turkmenistani citizen is practically required to have a portrait of the leader in their apartment. They're not really required, but they're so brainwashed that they just do it. So we already looked at the rap video of uh, about Turkmenistan that Gurbanguli Berdimuhamedov did, which was just incredible. Who does that, right? Which country leader raps? about his country. <laughs> Birdu Muhammadov is essentially a master of all traits. He's shown in state media to be a complete master and a complete genius in everything, starting from music, ending with horse riding, racing, shooting, everything. Everything imaginable, this guy is shown to be the greatest at. So for example, Gurbangui has videos where he plays music and plays really sick guitar licks, but the uh, guitar is uh, very conveniently covered by smoke, uh, by stage smoke. Uh, so, you know, I don't really think it's him hitting that lick, that tasty lick. Once again, he's also very obsessed with horse riding because um, like the national uh, symbol of Turkmenistan is a horse and a lot of his portraits uh, that are, you know, hanging around the city show them like himself riding on a horse and he of course loves participating in horse races and uh, you know, if anybody dares to overtake him in a horse race, he's probably never gonna be seen again. And he also fell off a horse once in, uh, in one of these races. <laughs> and of course, any recollection of that event uh, were not shown. On, on state media and everybody acted like it never happens because if you're dead, you'd be jailed. There is no way the supreme leader would fall off a horse. He's the best. You are fake news. He's also a master of uh, shooting. Uh, there's a ton of videos of Gurbanguli Berdimuhamedov uh, doing very bizarre shooting practices. You know, he basically shoots a gun and then the camera switches to the target basically collapsing, you know. There's a lot of editing going on here. I, I, I'm not, I don't really trust the fact that this guy who hasn't even served in the army is that accurate at shooting, especially when he's shooting uh, on a bicycle in a drive-by position. What is this? What the fuck is this? <laughs> and there's honestly just an endless uh, variety of videos involving this guy. Like, if you guys want to have some good entertainment, you should just Google this guy, uh, like on YouTube, playing sports, like driving cars, like rally driving, like this. Does this guy even do anything? Like, it, like it's kind of genius. Literally, his entire life is just, uh, you know, season control over a country in which the citizens have zero freedom whatsoever, and he just has all the country's money to himself, and he just does whatever every single day of his life. This guy is 
is dripping like crazy. And of course I'm saying like this is a fun thing, but it's not. Uh, once again, Turkmenistan is a horrible place to live and is considered by many to be one of the most strict authoritarian countries in the world. It's not funny. It's literally North Korea. The only thing where Turkmenistan is different from North Korea, in fact, would probably be its foreign policy. Here's the thing. The reason why you don't really hear about Turkmenistan as often as about North Korea in the news and the reason why a lot of you guys who are watching this video are probably hearing about this country or about the fact that this country is authoritarian and is like North Korea uh, diet through the edition for the first time is because they don't do anything politically and it's kind of genius because North Korea being the authoritarian hellhole that it is is also uh, you know is massively obsessed with like the US and the South Korea and it's constantly like on a power trip and constantly you know flexes its nuclear arsenal and stuff like that whereas Turkmenistan doesn't do anything it really doesn't even have any enemies and it doesn't really have any friends either and it's got pretty good relations with any countries by just not doing anything and just being quiet. So Turkmenistan just doesn't care. It's cool with all of its neighbors and they just can continue being the authoritarian oppressive government that they are without anybody even trying to do anything and nobody ever talks about it on the news because nobody cares. It's not like North Korea that says that they're gonna nuke the US every single other day. They're just chilling and the president is doing pretty fine. I think Kim Jong-un should, you know, really look at it and maybe do the same because honestly nobody cares about your nukes. If you just went quiet for just a year Maybe then you could just, you know, play basketball with Dennis Rodman and nobody would even care. So, Kim Jong-un, I know you're watching this video. <laughs> Get up your man's uh, Arkadak on the phone and ask him how he does this shit. You can learn a thing or two from our uh, weird post-Soviet leader. And yeah, guys, I guess that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys did find out something new from this video. I wanted to make a video on this guy for a while because he's an absolute, uh, I wouldn't say legend because he's like a terrible person, really. But he is, you know, based. He's based in, in, in a weird way. <laughs> He's definitely an interesting phenomenon. Of course, I wish uh, freedom and uh, prosperity to the Turkmenistani people, but, you know, looking at the things that are right now, um, it's probably gonna take a very long time to achieve that. Anyways, guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video. Once again, thank you so much for watching it. If you guys want to support me, make sure to go over down the description and buy my YouTubes, which is right here, right here, here it is. Or you can also support me on Patreon. I would really appreciate it, you guys. You can also join my private Patreon Discord if you do, so it's pretty cool. And yeah, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you like the new camera quality. I will also improve on it and maybe uh, try new lighting and stuff like that. So videos are gonna look much better now. I mean, just look at this autofocus, okay? Look at this autofocus. This is insane. This is fucking crazy. All right, guys, I'll stop now. Thank you so much for watching the video once again, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.